Well folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have another box of tools in for a pair. And I mean a box. An actual wooden box of tools. Don't often get them on like this. What have we got? An old Hitachi quarter inch router. An or that is an old one. A TR8. Never even heard of that one. Hitachi Cookie Company Limited. And the rest looks to be all Makita's. Makita Drill, brushless version, this is the 459. Caulking gun, haven't actually had one of these on for repair yet. This is a DCG 180, have to see what's wrong with that. Cordless saw, I've seen plenty of these on for repair. And a battery. Working. Might just be the lock on this one. An unpack driver. This is the older version. Only two brush motor on it. This is the 146. And then again, a Makita Draw SDS DHR242. I can see what's wrong with that one already. That will be a very simple fix. Right, we'll get started. Start off with the senior in the grip, the old Hitachi. Right, can't plug it in yet anyway, because there's no plug. But it looks like that spindle is not turning right. It's very, very, very stuff. What is she? 240 volt. Before we do anything, we want to know if the motor's good. It's not going to run right because there's a bearing gone, obviously. We'll stick a plug on the end of it anyway, make sure she's at least trying to run. And make sure there's no big heavy sparks coming out of here. Now, not bore you with actually fitting a plug. Right, she works and she's not sparking. It's just a bad bearing. Or maybe two. Let's see if we can get onto this. Oh, and brushes too. The lead's gone on that. Brush isn't worn out, it's actually just burnt through the lead. Or else just broken the end of it. So that adds a little bit more money onto it. And the same as that one. Could be they were jammed up in their holders, rusted on, and somebody pulled them out and pulled off the lead. Could be. Can't be 100% sure, but there's no actual burn marks on them. I'd say they could have just been corroded on. Somebody pulled them out and broke the lead and just kept using them. Will work. But I'll just replace them. Right, the easiest thing to do is to go off the base first. Now the easiest way to dismantle this is to take the base off first. Take the base off, you take off this here threaded guide rail here. Normally there are plastic nuts on the top and bottom, just for setting the height, fine tuning, you know. But they normally break off, so it's for a dome nut here and a couple of lock nuts as well. Normally just pull this one off and run this nut at the top because it's a lock nut. You'll be sitting turning this thing for ages before you get that off. So the easiest thing is to slacken off the bottom one and remove it down here. Just a bit less unscrewing. It's a bit quicker. Remove that whole thing, make it a bit easier. 
and the whole base. You can just pull off. Move that to one side. Don't forget your wee pin for the inside of it. There's another one up in here. Keep them together. And you can unscrew it. So don't drop this little brass packer as well. That sits between the thread for locking this wee arm here. And the wee brass bar actually presses against these rails to lock the base in place. Actually, in good enough nick. And so that's done in a whole pile of work. And the motor's definitely not burnt either. So that one's on its way out. It's the bottom one here that's gone completely. To get the actual armature out. The last thing you want to do is damage this thread here on the end of the armature otherwise you're never going to get your collet nut and butt back on again. So you have to press this out if it's tight you could easily damage the aluminium if you're using a bearing press plus it's hard to actually get this set up nice and level. Sometimes what you can get away with doing is using a center punch. Put the center punch on the hole off the armature shaft, give it a wee tap. If it's not too tight, it should come out. She's moving anyway. That's it. You have to get this out first because the bearing is actually screwed on, so you can't press it out. Knock that out. That's totally gone. I'm going to change that. While we're at it, we'll also change this one. Because it's about to fail anyway. There's not much point in leaving that one in place. So we got, what's that? 608. Six two zero zero.
not so bad it's fairly easy to change Now obviously the side with the handle on it has the scale for the depth gauge and this side has a lock symbol for the actual lock handle but you can actually fit that either way it'll go on either way but only one way is right fitting your base as your depth gauge which is actually missing that's no odds to us because the customer could still have that himself obviously the depth gauge will be dropping up and down here and resting against this so that's the orientation the base goes back on again lock it you put this little brass insert back in again take out that c-clip remove this nut with the base held up in place drop on your wee brass insert Then you can tighten it down and just have that arm sitting so it's nice and flush with here. So it's nice and comfortable to engage and disengage. That's it. On your collet then. It doesn't have to be too tight. That'll tighten up itself as it's cutting. And of course, a new set of brushes. These original ones are actually 20s. So that would have been originally 999020. Covalent ones now are 999043. Same brush, different number. Drop them in. Sure the best doesn't come off again whenever you're slacking it off Put on your adjuster then And that's it. Hopefully she runs a bit smoother now. Nice one. One very old Hitachi quarter inch router. T or it. Well then you plug brushes and bearings and she's still running strong now next up we have a Makita SDS drill 
clearly working. We can also see what the problem is. And that's a common one for the Makita. Chuck. The sleeve is jammed up and more than likely is not holding the butt. Right, two things can go wrong with these. One, the cap, the rubber cap at the end can sometimes wear out. Once it wears out, it slides down over the top of the tool holder and pushes the sleeve back like this, causing it to stay in the open position all the time. So the way to fix that is just to pop off the cap and put on a replacement. Quick, easy and cheap repair. This one, not as simple, but still simple enough and quite cheap. Some of the older Makitas and some other brands, the chuck sleeve can actually rotate around. So you need to slide it on to release the butt, but it can rotate around as well. It's just sitting there and free floating. Some of the older Makitas were like this. This here, some of the newer ones, especially this DHR 242, that is not the case. The chuck sleeve is actually an oval shape. There's two flat ends on it down around here. So it can't actually rotate around what people end up doing. They open the chuck, or they think it's like the old one, or they don't know how to open it, like a Milwaukee one or something like that. They think they have to toss the chuck to open it. They toss the sleeve around, and they jam it in the down position. Simple human error, but it's only a cheap part. Other things that can happen is the chuck can bind up. If you're putting it to a deep hole, and she binds up along the edge. This, this could have done, because she has marked Whenever she binds up, that causes the chuck sleeve to stay in position while the chuck itself spins and spins out and rounds off the inside of the plastic sleeve. So this one works if you put it to the right place. See there? That'll work now. But because that's now rounded out, once it moves, it's in a lock position now. And then if you get it down, it won't come back up again. So the problem is the sleeve itself. And the way to fix it is to just replace it. Because this one's old, we'll also just replace this cap as well. The sleeve is held on by a C-clip down here and this cap is actually held on by this angled washer here which is then held on by a C-clip again. So you have to remove two C-clips to replace this. A pair of circlip pliers is all you need. Prise that up. Take off the washer. And take off your other C clip on the bottom. And on side, you have a little rubber ring and a steel ring. And there's the problem in there. See these two flat edges here? They are meant to be flat. I've actually rounded off so they're a round hole now so the round bit spins around and jams up the flat edge is meant to be sitting on this flat spot here and here so to stop this happening again don't rotate this sleeve it just goes up and down and that's it as soon as we are this far we'll just give us a wee clean out as well Wash all these butts out and replace that and replace that. So now they should be the only two parts we need for this here little repair. And if you're wanting to know what part numbers to order, it's actually written on the part themselves underneath the actual cap 286288 8 8 8, and on the plastic sleeve itself, it's 
from there also. 451533-2. You're the part you need to order if you ever have this little problem. So first thing when you're rebuilding for any SDS or SDS Max chuck, we gobagoo. Make sure there's actually some grease in the tool holder. Spring on first and your metal disc for holding the balls. Balls just drop on then. The disc holds them in place. Metal ring over the top of them. The actual chamfer side faces up. So this is the actual clamp that's actually holding your drill bit and the chuck. It's the balls that actually hold it in place and it's this that holds the balls in place. So whenever that's sitting up, the balls are sitting in here and they can't move further back so it locks them in position. Whenever you push the sleeve down, the balls are actually sitting inside the chamfer so they can move out. So whenever you put it down, the balls move out and you actually pull the chuck out, the balls just move out of the way whenever you release it. Whenever you then release it, this sits up and locks the two balls back in position. So that's on there. And there is our actual offending part. You can see in this one, she's round. You can see this one has two flat edges. About them two flat edges, this will just start spinning around and starts jamming up. We flat butts have to sit against here and here. So you can see it actually locks in position. Goes up and down no problem. If you were to twist that around, she's just going to jam. So drop that on. Then your rubber sleeve over the top. Then your metal steel ring, the exact same ship as the rubber one. Then your C clip to hold that down. the cap on the rubber end this metal washer goes on top and she's just sloped on one side the slope faces down if you put it on the other way around the cap will not be in the right position clip that on Push on your cap and you're ready to go. A nice, cheap and easy fix, but one you do see quite often, simply because that wee sleeve is not meant to rotate and that cap can actually wear out on the top and sometimes force the sleeve down. But that generally happens because people are boring too deep, they're using too short a butt and trying to get it on too deep. So instead of stopping here, they're actually putting the drill butt. They're actually putting the front of the drill all the way into the concrete. The concrete is wearing away the actual rubber cap on the end. That's what the rubber cap's for, to stop you hitting the tool holder underneath. But if you keep doing it, you wear this away as well. It eventually starts pushing everything down so the chuck stays in the open position. So, if ever I bother with a Makita SDS drill, not holding the butt or locking the button position, they're the two butts you need to replace. The rubber cap and the plastic sleeve. That's her. Quick and easy fix. Now, next up, Makita Skill Saw. This one's running. Is there a wobble in that blade? No. Looked like it the way this dusk was actually shining there. It actually just looks like that on the camera. Doesn't look like that when I'm looking at it. 
Right, I think the base is all that's wrong with us. Guards working, obviously the motor's running, blade's spinning, there's no missing teeth. Base isn't damaged, it's not bent or crooked. And she's sitting square. The only thing I can actually see wrong with us is a slack base. Which is a very simple fix if that's all it is. And of course, can't ring the customer to find out if this is all that's wrong with it because there's no phone number. So I have to just guess that this is the problem. All that's happened is either somebody's opened this and taken it apart, didn't tighten it up right, or it's got a bang or something. All that's wrong is this here is just too slack. Well, not actually this, the nut on top. So this base just goes up and down, and it's basically just a long bolt that actually bolts it down tight whenever you want to fix it. So it's got a mushroom end on this side with a wee square lock that slides into this here rail. A square lock stops this end from spinning around, so it's only the nut that tightens and slackens it off. And that's a left hand thread on this side. So whenever you tighten her down, she tightens up that nut and locks the base. Nice and simple. But if you mess around with us, sometimes people take it off, you have to do something else with it maybe, and they put it back on but don't tighten it up first. So whenever they're finished, thing never actually tightens. It has to go the whole way around here to actually tighten up. To fit this, tighten that nut by hand, put this on over the top, and adjust it so that she's just sitting flush with the housing, just there. That's it tightened up fully. Whenever you push it all the way back to the motor housing, it slackens it off enough to move. It doesn't need to be overly slack. But it needs to be tight. And the actual lock lever is in the horizontal position. You don't want to be tightening up when it's down here. You want it tightened up here. So that is all that I can see wrong with us. That handle is just held in position then by that C-clip. Very simple, very effective. You just need to have it tightened to the right position for it to work right. I think that's it. Everything else in this is working. That's it. One Makita DSS 611 with a quick wee repair to the lock lever for the base. And it's not to say this is a very young machine. She's already 10 years old, 2014. She's done 10 years of work, obviously not a massive amount, but still, she's still running after 10 years, and that there is the only problem she has. That's not doing too bad, especially for an older brushed machine. So next up is the Makita Impactor, and again, this is an older one. The DTD 146. And she's a 2014 machine as well. So the saw was also 2014 and even that Makita SDS drill was 2016. So this boy's actually taking quite good care of these tools. He's not abusing them too much. What's wrong with this one? Nah, that doesn't sound good. Sounds like a motor. You can see the brushes are still making contact. If you move the armature, the brushes are making full contact with it. So, it's not the brushes in other words. We 
can get in and see if we can do anything. Might even have an armature for one of these if we do need to replace it. Important thing is the field, make sure that that's still got plenty of force on it. Make sure the magnet hasn't got overheated, it lost its strength. That one seems okay. The armature itself doesn't look bad. But there's something going on with it. It's just got plenty of use. Actually, feel the combar here. How dented on she does. She's very uneven. If we're going to replace the armature, we need to replace the brushes. I do actually have one on stock. Thirty-eight nineteen last price. So that thing looks like it's been lying here ten years anyway. We we'll have to see if we can do any better in that price. That's the part number there. If you're ever looking for it. This looks to be an upgraded version, different fan. So that fan, a wee bit more rugged, but doesn't make as much flow. This fan here would actually produce a wee bit more airflow. Apart from that, everything's the same. Get rid of that. And stick it on here. Just in case. Put a wee dab of grease on there. And I mean a little dab, about a pea-sized amount of grease. Do not put too much on. That's her. Make sure everything's sitting down. Not the most powerful unpacker in the world, but if they're last in 10 years, they're definitely reliable enough. Make sure your springs are back down, brushes are engaged. And it probably is a wee bit expensive changing the armature on this thing, but still, it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying a new one. I was getting 10 years out of that last one. You could easily get 10 years out of this one. Much better. It's like a new machine. One new armature, one set of brushes, and a 10 year old Makita DTD 146. That's her. So next up is the brushless Makita drill. DHP 459. It was actually a younger one, 2017 machine. What's wrong with it? Now she's running. Chuck's working. Gearbox is working. Clutch is working. And hammer mode is working. What is going on with us? Something there, no? It 
She's not always going on to first gear. See that, la? That's slipping out. Right, looks like an intermittent fault and the gearbox. Not much in this one. Nicely laid out down here, mind you. Controller, all bullet connectors in to replace the field or the stator if you ever need to. So, in other words, if this breaks, your controller fails on you, it's not worth fixing. But if you need a rotor, stator, switch, battery contacts, they're all separate. I bought an all Makita's inside your gearbox, one solid piece. So there's nothing actually available inside of the Makita gearbox, which has always been a big disappointment. Get that out of there. Let's see what we can do with this. So straight away, that's a bit of a bother as well. Because this change lever is only plastic and the actual springs for locating it are only plastic. They can fatigue and squash in so they're not actually springing out properly. That's one of the things that could be wrong here. So that should be springing out and locking onto first and second gear. But obviously that mightn't be the only cause of the problem. Yeah, see the way she's just not going fully down there. Another thing it could be is the actual selector ring on the inside. Some of the bigger Makita drills have a problem where Makita cheaped out on the manufacturing. A sweet change lever here is actually a plastic ring and there's a couple of steel pins holding on the gear that actually locks into place and drives the gearbox. Some of them only have two of the metal pins to locate the gear onto the plastic ring because the actual gear is only floating there. They're meant to have four. So if you want the likes of the bigger DHP 481s or 486 drills, they've only got two pans locating it when they're meant to have four. And they do the same sort of thing. They don't engage in the gearbox correctly. One of the gears just doesn't always select right. You have to run the drill a little bit while it's putting pressure on the chain lever to get it to engage right. So that might be the problem here as well. That's if they only use two pans instead of four. Open her up and check it out. I don't think they do like it with this particular model metal gears this metal gear here these teeth on the outside lock into this metal gear here so whenever you put on the second speed it locks this gear so instead of locking against a plastic body she's locking against a metal ring there's no way you're going to strip that out it's a good design for a gearbox and i actually like it for that reason but the question is what's it like on this Let's see with this metal gear She's actually pivoting and rocking back and forth. That's because there are the two pins that locate onto it. They locate around this track so the gear can still spin while sitting in position. Now the bigger drills actually meant to have four pins on it, like the really old original BHP drills. They had four pins on it, but the newer ones, for some reason, they could only fitted two, even though there's a hole top and bottom for a third and a fourth one keep this gear nice and rigid and stationary on the one plane the question is does this tick four or two there are the pins there either side top and bottom then there's no hole so in other words no it doesn't tick a third and fourth pin if it did we could just take off this cover pull out that selector ring and put on an extra pin. They're the exact same ones as the older BHP drills anyway. 
and I actually have them here in stock. But sadly, if there's no hole on this, there's no way to fit it. So it looks like this is just going to have to stay the way it is. So that's all that selector's doing. She's just pushing that gear back and forth. When she's back here, this gear can rotate around along with the gears. If you push it forward into second gear, it locks onto this ring here. So this gear is stationary and the planetary gears run around the inside of it. That's what gives you your two speeds. But this is just not something I can fix because that's pivoting back and forth. She makes it unsteady, so whenever you actually slap it onto second gear, she doesn't always engage properly. These teeth here could be sitting on top of these ones, like that. So you actually have to put pressure on it and run the drill for it to slip forward and engage properly. So in other words, there's not much I can do with this. There's nothing we can do in here, nothing we can do, let's just replace this so it has a wee bit more tension to hold it onto both gears. So our new change lever should hopefully do at least a little bit of a better job. It's better than nothing. go just watch this little limb of wires here very very fragile don't nup them whatever you do Might be better with the four pins in that gear, but changing that there selector actually did just as good a job. 
Just lock it on tight into position there now. Suppose if that's a slack fit and she's not engaging fully, she doesn't hold it all the way forward for whenever you pull the trigger for it to engage right. So if that's slack, she's going to go forward and slide back out again if it feels any resistance. Once it slides out, it's not going to engage whenever you pull the trigger. So that selector needs to be good and tight. A good lock on it to lock it forward in that gear. So whenever you pull the trigger, it actually engages that ring gear pro properly. So if you ever have the same problem, every now and again you pull the trigger and she's not engaged in the gearbox, make sure that change lever there is not slack. That's working fine now. Didn't need to go into the gearbox at all. Just change that lever if you're ever in any bother. That's another wee quick cheap fix. That wee part there only cost a couple of euro. That's another one. Now, last up for this lot is one I haven't worked on before. The Makita cock in gun. DCG 180. This is the must be the youngest of all the machines. 2020. What's wrong with this one? And she's running. And she's working. Let's give her a wee test out and see what she's actually doing. It's definitely working anyway. It? Not a thing wrong with that. Get rid of the goo. Right, so she's clearly working. So let's check in here, make sure she's not gummed up or anything. Yeah, a little bit, not much. Yeah, not much wrong there. A little bit of silicon on the screw. Nothing else. Sometimes the can bust the tube and spray out the back. Bust back here and coat the inside of this here. But that's nothing. A little bit the end of it's nothing to worry about. There's not a thing wrong with that. She's going forward and she's backing off like she's meant to. And she's driving forward, she's got all the pressure. But once you let go of the trigger, you hear the motor actually wind back. That's not the pressure pushing the motor back, that's the motor actually running in the reverse. Once she goes in reverse, she frees up the mechanism so she can actually just move it by hand. So if you're halfway through a tube, you're whole way to the bottom, you can just pull back the handle, pull out the old tube, Stick out a new one and just keep on going. Sadly, we're not going to get the open one today. To have a peek inside. Can't justify opening it if there's nothing wrong with it. Don't actually know what that was sent in for at all. Don't know why you sent that one in. This was just to be checked over maybe. That's clearly working. Which is definitely working. There's nothing wrong with it. Can't do much more with that there. Anyway, that's it. That's everything. Box of tools fixed up again. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Give us a wee like and a follow there. If you're enjoying the content, give us a wee subscribe and a membership if you want to as well. 
Cheers.